This is Mr. Martin. This is a video for example three for pre-calculus advance for the ellipse notes. Uh, so for this one, we want to find center, vertices, and foci of the ellipse given by 16x squared plus 25y squared minus 32x minus 50y plus 16 equals zero. So what we're going to want to do first is uh, put in standard form. Okay, uh, now we've done something similar with circles where we had to complete the square twice. This is going to get a little bit more complicated. So um, if you have any questions about the steps, make sure that you ask because there's a couple of key uh, points in the solution here where if you're not really sure what's going on, you're not going to be able to get the correct answer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange um, everything on the left that has a variable so that the like variables are together. So I'm going to put the x's together. I have 16x squared minus 32x and put the y's together, 25y squared minus 50y. And I'm going to move the constant over to the other side. So that's going to equal negative 16. Now I'm going to complete the square for the x's and for the y's. And in order to complete the square, remember that the leading coefficient has to be 1. So I'm going to factor a 16 out of my x's. So that's going to be x squared minus 2x. And then I'm going to add something in there. And I'm also going to factor uh, from my y's, I'm going to factor a 25, so that's 25 times y squared minus 2y, and then plus something over there, is equal to negative 16. Now, in this first set of parentheses, I'm going to take half of my middle term, so half of that's negative 1, and square it. But really, so far on the left, I'm adding 16 times negative 1 squared. So on this side I have to add 16 times negative 1 squared. And over here I have a negative 2 also, so I'm going to add negative 1 squared. So over here, even though in the parentheses I'm only adding negative 1 squared, I'm multiplying it by 25, so I'm really adding 25 times negative 1 squared. So you have to make sure you don't forget about these uh, constants that you factored out because whatever's going inside the parentheses is getting multiplied that so that's really what you're adding on the left side so you have to make sure you add that on the right side. All right so moving on I have 16 times x minus 1 if I factor that uh, perfect square trinomial and then I'm going to have 25 times y minus 1 squared and if I calculate all this on the other side, it's going to be 25. Uh, negative 1 squared is 1, so I have negative 16 plus 16, so those cancel out. Again, negative 1 squared is 1, so I have 25 times 1. That simplifies to 25. And remember our standard form, it's equal to 1. For ellipses, it's always going to be equal to 1. So in order for this to equal 1, I have to divide by 25, which means I have to divide this by 25 which means I have to divide this by 25. So simplifying here, it gets a little bit tricky. Um, I want to get rid of this 16 here. So if I multiply by 1 16th, one sixteenth in the numerator, and I'm going to multiply by 1 16th in the denominator. Normally we'll just um, simplify like we will over here, but this technique here might make it easier for you to visualize what's going on. So the 1 16th and the 16 cancel out, so I'm left with x minus 1 squared over 25 sixteenths. Now, um, this does look ugly, but when I take the square root, it'll just be 5 fourths. And then these both cancel out, so I'm left with y minus 1 squared over 1. We always want to have a denominator. And it equals 1. So we're looking for the larger denominator. 25 sixteenths is larger than 1. So I know that this is going to be horizontal. And I know that uh, a squared is 25 sixteenths. 
So that means that A is equal to 5 fourths. And I know that B squared is equal to 1. So that means that B is equal to 1. And if I go ahead and make a little sketch, I know that my center is going to be at 1, 1. So center 1, 1. So I can graph that. And I already figured out it's going to be horizontal because A is under my X's. So to get to my uh, vertices, I'm going to go to the left and to the right. This is uh, 1.25. So for my vertices, I have to go 1.25 from uh, my X value. So that's going to be 1 plus 1.25. So that's 2.25 comma 1. And I'm going to go 1.25 to the left. That'll put me at negative 0.25 comma 1. So there's my vertices. And for my covertices, I'm going to go up and down 1 because my B value is 1. So I'm going to go to my center, which is 1, and then go up to 2. And I'm going to go to my center and go down 1, which would put me at 0. There's my uh, covertices. In order to find the foci, I'm going to have to find C. So C squared is A squared minus B squared. So that's going to be 25 sixteenths minus 16 sixteenths, because that's just my 1. So that's going to be 9 sixteenths. So C is going to be 3 fourths. So then I'm going to go from my center to the left and to the right. So if I'm at 1 and I go to the right 3 fourths, I'm going to be at uh, 1.75 comma 1. And if I go to the left 0.75, I'm going to be at 0.25 comma 1. So there's my uh, center, my vertices, my covertices, my foci. And then also here's my standard form. This process is really important too. So if you have any questions about anything that went on here, make sure that you uh, write down your questions and ask me next time you see me. We'll see you the next time.